So the second case is an 82-year-old man with very significant comorbidity, including an ischemic cardiomyopathy, uh, coronary artery disease, a pacemaker, and a rheumatological condition on chronic steroids. He presented to an outside hospital uh, a week ago with abdominal pain and was diagnosed with cholecystitis with suspicion of cholecystitis on ultrasound. His uh, immediate clinical course was complicated by sepsis with hypotension, ICU admission for inotropes and development of acute renal failure, as well as now delirium. He had a cholecystostomy tube placed uh, that day and then ERCP was attempted but failed. A review of those films shows that it was likely the pancreatic duct that was dilated. He was transferred to our unit, uh, septic and unstable, and had an EUS performed initially uh, with findings of a pancreatic head mass that was biopsied uh, with findings of atypia and a background of acute inflammation. He subsequently had an attempted ERCP, which required a rendezvous procedure for biliary access. There was a distal CBD stricture, uh, but no stones, uh, and a stent was placed. Um, notably, on cholangiogram, there was complete cystic duct obstruction. And while blood was draining from the uh, cholecystostomy tube, uh, none was seen in the CBD. So he's been referred for internalisation of the cholecystostomy tube. Good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? I hope so. I guess I'm not going to get the feedback. Um, this is a, a very challenging case. And uh, uh, the emphasis here is that this patient has significant comorbidities. He's 82. Uh, he is definitely not a candidate for surgery. Um, and there's still some pu puzzling aspects to this story because he presented with cholecystitis. And then he had a cholecystostomy tube placed, but then he's also jaundiced. And the ERCP, as you heard, the initial one failed. A rendezvous was required to gain access to his bile duct, and a bile duct stent has been placed. And uh, that stent uh, is in, Psi 2. His numbers are improving, but he's still really, really sick. Uh, and so the concern is that his gallbladder is not draining uh, uh, adequately through the cholecystostomy tube. And we may be able to improve that with internalization of uh, his gallbladder drainage. If you have the EUS image now, uh, I've got the tip of the echo endoscope in the duodenal bulb. And we can see right here the bile duct. This is the cystic duct right next to it. We know that the cystic duct is obstructed. We don't know why it's obstructed. Um, it's doubtful that it's from tumor. Uh, the question is whether maybe it's a stone. Uh, we see the stent in the bile duct here. It's creating some shadowing. Uh, we can follow that bile duct. This, by the way, is the portal vein uh, below the bile duct. So you see the stent inside the bile duct, and we can follow that bile duct like this. Here you can see where the cystic duct merges with the bile duct. Uh, let's actually go the opposite direction and follow that cystic duct a little bit to see if we see a stone in there. And um, I'm just sort of torquing and turning. There is something uh, bright inside of the cystic duct. Could be a stone, but it doesn't look like a typical stone. Uh, if you can mag up just one for me, please. So that's this is the cystic duct. I'm torquing, I'm turning, I'm trying to see if there's a way I can follow that cystic duct to the gallbladder. So we'll go back to where it joins the bile duct. There it is. Right, so now we're turning, turning, trying to follow the cystic duct towards the gallbladder. You can see the gallbladder on the left side, uh, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to follow the cystic duct all the way. There's definitely here uh, something echogenic, and it does create a little bit of shadowing, so maybe it's stone, but it's not a really classic stone. And then... This is about as far as I can follow it to the gallbladder. The gallbladder is on the left-hand side. So let's come on back now again. There's the portal vein on the left side. Coming back, following the cystic duct, um, towards the bile duct. There it joins. And now we see the stent in the bile duct. And now we're going to look for the pancreatic head mass. Okay. Yes. All right, so um, while I was waiting, 
uh, I did a pass, and uh, Ian Jaffe is our pathologist. He just looked at the specimen. I acquired it with a 25-gauge needle, and it's adenocarcinoma. So let me show you the mass. So we'll, uh, it's right here. See the mass? It's not very large, actually. It's, uh, it's surprising. It's just in a bad spot where it's obstructing both the bile duct and the pancreatic duct. There's the mass. It measures about 2.6 centimeters. Very heterogeneous mass here. The mass does not invade any vessels. So it, it is, uh, it is uh, theoretically resectable. This is just a little cyst right here. This is not the portal vein. You saw the portal vein earlier, and I followed it. It was clean. The SMA was clean. So uh, it is resectable, but unfortunately, the patient is not an operative candidate. So we have a resectable lesion, but a, a non-operative candidate because of his severe comorbidities. Here you can see the, the stent uh, as it enters into the bulb, into the, I'm sorry, into the duodenum, the second duodenum across the papilla. There it is. And there you can follow it across the duodenal wall. There it goes across the duodenal wall, and now it's traversing the stricture. So this is the stricture from the cancer in the head of the pancreas. And now we continue to follow the bile duct this way, and now we're outside of the bile duct, or I should say outside of the pancreas, in the upstream part of the bile duct, and here it looks normal. So the bile duct now becomes normal upstream from the pancreas, and uh, again, you see here the portal vein, which looks just fine. So the portal vein is fine. Uh, so we have our diagnosis, and we've got adenocarcinoma. So uh, our task now is to see if we can drain the gallbladder internally. All right, so let me, uh, I'm gonna take this out, uh, the needle out. So we won't need to do another pass. And let's look at the gallbladder. So this is the IVC and the aorta. On the left side is the IVC here, and this is the aorta. And we're going to turn around and look for the gallbladder, sort of swivel around looking for the gallbladder. There's the bile duct. And what I'm going to do is uh, push in a little further to see if I can uh, find a good, good position to visualize the gallbladder. This is the aorta again, and the spine is below it. This is the IVC now. You can see there's ascites. There's ascites here. That's not a good thing, right? There's ascites. In other words, you're looking now at the gallbladder, but unfortunately, there's ascites. That means uh, it's very obvious that this gallbladder wall is not adherent to the duodenal wall, right? I think everyone will agree there's no adherence between the two structures. So if we're going to place a stent to drain the gallbladder into the duodenum, we definitely uh, have to have a system that allows us to immediately deploy the stent. And that stent should be lumen opposing so that it holds the gallbladder up against the duodenal wall. It should be fully covered so that you don't get any leakage of gallbladder contents or duodenal contents into that space between the two because they're not adherent. Um, and uh, one should be able to deploy this stent without having to do any kind of exchange over a guide wire, uh, because if you do, then you're going to get leakage alongside the guide wire when you do the exchange. So do we have a stent like that, Kate? We just so happen to have a hot Axio stent uh, that, I, um, that I invented a decade ago. Uh, so now it's fully commercialized uh, by Exlumina, uh, which has been acquired by Boston. And I think we can do this thanks to this uh, stent. So you see the gallbladder here. You can see the contents are very heterogeneous. That means that there must be really thick, inspissated um, material and maybe blood clot in there because there was bleeding from the cholecystostomy tube. And I think the real challenge here is going to be the risk that 
as we penetrate through the duodenal wall and go into the gallbladder, the risk that we're going to push the gallbladder wall away and not enter into the gallbladder lumen. Um, and this hot axios, which is a, a cautery enhanced delivery sheath, it's bougie shaped at the tip, um, and it has fine wires running along the side, and, the, and it's been constructed, masterfully constructed by the engineers at Ex Lumina uh, to enable the very quick, easy, and hopefully effortless penetration of the wall layers so that you can deliver the stent immediately into the target lumen uh, without any risk of, of pushing the target structure away from the bowel wall. And we're going we're gonna to see if it works. I think this is the only chance this patient has. Um, otherwise, uh, we're, we're, we're left with a patient who is deteriorating very rapidly. Uh, he, is, he has today uh, it, more altered mental status than yesterday. Um, he is uh, still septic, so he is not getting better. Uh, and so the hope is that if we can internalize his drainage, and I think this is his problem. His problem is an infected gallbladder. So either you're going to have to take him to surgery and remove the gallbladder, and I don't think he'll survive surgery, uh, or we need to drain his gallbladder this way. I think that's what we're left with in terms of choices. So it's a choice of, uh, of two, two options, which both of which are not great, but clearly this is the lesser of the two evils, if you will, uh, would be to try to drain this um, uh, internally. And I do think we have a very good chance of succeeding. All right, with that said, uh, let's uh, bring the lights up just a little bit here in the room so that I can show you how we uh, are going to uh, insert the delivery system for the hot axios. So let's have the hot axios. This was uh, just FDA uh, cleared uh, a few weeks ago. And um, it's been available in Europe now for a few years. Uh, but it took a long time to get it through the FDA to get it cleared. Uh, we did a, a large multi-center trial with uh, 30 centers um, in, in the U.S. Not 30 centers, I'm sorry, 30 patients, I think seven centers uh, in the U.S. Uh, and the results were, were, were very good and convinced the FDA uh, to allow the clearance of this device. Um, this device, I can tell you, is 10 years in evolution since I filed the patent in uh, 2004. Um, and now, a decade later, we actually have the full device. And this delivery system is a very key part of, this, of uh, the success of this procedure. So what I've now done, and I don't know what you're seeing on the screen because I don't have an image here in front of me, but uh, this is the handle. And it, ha it does have a swivel lock here, which means I can lure lock it but I can move the orientation of the handle in whatever direction I'd like it to be so that I can see uh, the front of the handle. Um, and that's important because you have uh, two components. You have a lower component and an upper component. That lower component uh, with the uh, distal hub here, I'll call it the distal hub, allows me to advance the sheath forward. Uh, that's no different than an FNA needle that you would advance forward to do an FNA. Uh, this more proximal component is for the deployment of the stent. Uh, so this is a proximal hub or an upper hub, and it allows you to deploy the distal flange completely independent of the proximal flange. And that's very, very key, uh, that the two flanges are deployed independent of one another, and there's a full stop between the deployment of the distal flange and the deployment of the proximal flange. And basically, every conceivable safety feature has been integrated into this device to make it as reproducible as possible. So the first step here, and I'm going to have one assistant just hold the, the, the scope. So I think you can all agree that right now, uh, the gallbladder is up against the duodenal wall. and you did see earlier, it's not adherent. There's a CITES fluid between the two, but we found a spot where the two structures are uh, close to one another, and we can uh, measure out the, uh, the distance here, 
or the size of the gallbladder, uh, it's about four centimeters. And we'll measure out uh, here, the duodenal wall is here. This is the gallbladder wall, all right? That's the echogenic layer is the gallbladder wall. And this is the duodenal wall. And this is the muscularis propria of the duodenal wall. So we're going to be going between, uh, through these two wall layers, which is with a thickness of, um, let me just get that for you. Where is that measured out, the thickness here? Ah, yeah, it's five millimeters. Five millimeters, the thickness of five millimeters. And now we'll go ahead and measure uh, the uh, size of the, the gallbladder. We'll go from the outer wall. You can see it there. And we'll measure it all the way down here. And that is 4.5. So 4.5 by 4 centimeters, round structure. And uh, you can see the echogenic material in there. I don't see anything that's shadowing. So I don't think there are any stones in there. But clearly the contents are very thickened. Um, and and there's, some, uh, there's some debris in there. All right, now the first step is uh, to advance the sheath out. So I'm going to unlock. So there's an unlock here. And I don't, if you can zoom in on this. I, now I can, I, now I have a view of what you're seeing. So you can see there's a lock and unlock button. And this allows me now to advance this lower hub right here. And I can advance this out. So what I want you to do is watch as I advance this out. You're going to see it come out of the working channel. And my elevator is fully open, and you can see it coming out right there. So hopefully you can see this. This is the tip right here. All right, so we're going to keep advancing this, and you're going to see that this is going to tend to push away. So uh, it's very important to have your assistant holding this position very securely. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to apply cautery to help us penetrate through the wall of the duodenum and the wall of the gallbladder. So we will go through this open space where there's ascites, but hopefully uh, what, we, uh, what we want to accomplish is that we can get quickly into the gallbladder lumen, and if we're there, we can immediately deploy the distal flange of the stent, right, without any kind of exchange. All right, so now Kate is going to hook this up to uh, the, um, here, right there, is going to hook up the cautery, so there is a port here for the cautery that's hooked up. I'm going to just apply some gentle pressure here. And then I'm going to press on the pedal using pure cutting current. That's very important to use pure cutting current. And I'm going to then advance uh, into the gallbladder. And I'm going to apply a little bit of cautery initially uh, just to sort of prime everything and then advance forward. So I'm going to step on the cautery for a little bit and then start to advance forward. Are we ready? And we've got pure cutting current. We've checked our settings. Okay, good. So let me just uh, hold this a little bit like this. All right, one second here. Let me just pull, just pull back a little bit like that. That's right. That's good. So I've got my assistant holding here. I'm stepping on the current and I'm pushing forward. And I'm in. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm inside, and I'm going to push in as far as I can. OK? I'm in as far as I can go, and I'm now going to lock this sheath here, take this cautery off. I'm through the walls. You can see it very nicely. I have now locked the sheath. So the sheath is not going to move at all. I'm going to take off this safety pin here. Pops off like that. I'm going to deploy the distal flange, and there's a lock unlock button here. You can see I've shifted it to the right. Now I'm going to pull back, pull back very slowly, and in a moment, we should see the flange open, and you see it open right there. See it? It's opened up like a disc, like that. Okay, so now I have the distal flange open. It clicked, which means that there's no risk that the proximal flange will uh, accidentally deploy. I have to actively deploy the proximal flange, but I'm not going to do that until I'm in good position to deploy it. So I'm going to unlock now here. I've unlocked the sheath, and I'm going to snug the sheath up like this. So I'm pulling up, pulling up, and I'm going to pull up until I see
that plan sort of deform a little bit. And you can see it deforming now. Okay? So now, as soon as I see that deform, I'm going to lock this again. And now I'm going to deploy the, um, the proximal flange. Now that proximal flange is going to deploy in the working channel of the scope. So I'm pulling back, I'm pulling back, and I've now deployed the proximal flange. And now I'm going to unlock the sheath, and now let's get the endoscopic view. So I want to have the endoscopic view, and you can have the view of me. And I'm going to pull away from the wall. And as I pull away from the wall, I'm going to uh, give some air, and I'm going to push this, the uh, stent out. And um, I'm looking right now. See the stent there, right? And I'm pushing it out. I'm pushing it out by pushing the sheath forward, and now it deploys. So now the proximal flange has fully deployed in the duodenal bulb. You see it there, OK? So now I have uh, deployed the proximal flange, and that is hugging the inside of the bulb. You can see that on the image, on the endoscopic view. And then we can try to recapture. Why don't I just go ahead and just pull this out for now? Now, we do have the option, if we wanted, we could put a guide wire through here. There's no need to do that. So I'm just going to pull this out. As you, know, as you may note, I have no fluoro on. No, I have no, no lead on. So I'm not using any fluoro for this procedure. I'm going to pull this out now. And just very slowly pull it out. I'd like to pull it out under vision, if ideally. So let me just pull back a little bit. And I'm just going to pull back, keep pulling back. There we go. Now it's been pulled out, so go ahead and pull it completely out. All right, and now I'd like to show you how it looks on uh, EUS. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to switch out. Uh, well, we can go ahead and dilate the lumen of the stent. I'm just trying to see if I can show you quickly what this looks like. Just trying to get into a good position for you. moment. This is the, uh, the antrum. The pylorus is here, so I've got to pop through here to be able to show you this. Uh, we will now prepare, uh, uh, get the pediatric gastroscope prepared. We're going to dilate the scent up in just a moment. I just have to pop through the uh, pylorus here. I'm sorry? Yes, 8, 9, 10 balloon. A little bit of edema here at the uh, pylorus, so I just have to see if I can pop through here. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, now I'm in again. So I'm going to look to see if there's if it's possible for me to show you the stent and. Um, obviously, you have to, I have to be in very good position to show it to you. This is all the pancreas cancer here that, uh, that you're looking at. So that's not what we're interested in. There's the aorta. And second here, I'm just trying to swivel around to where the, uh, that's the IVC and the aorta. I just thought it would be very nice if you could see the, um, uh, the stent. So why don't we do this, because uh, I have to turn all the way to the other side to be able to show it to you. In the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and once you put the guide wire through here, or you could advance the guide wire that's in the dilating system. What I need to do here is I need to get into the lumen of the stent. Um, and you can see on the endoscopic, can I have the endoscopic image large, please? No, flo no EUS image right now. I don't need the EUS. I need to be able to get myself perpendicular to the stent. And right now, I'm not. I'm more 
uh, tangential to it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, to do this. I'm going to try my best. You can see the, the stent hugging up against the wall. Maybe if I try to pull back a little bit. It's, it's a little tricky getting myself into a, a good position. You can see that there's some uh, old blood coming out, and I think that's what was inside of the, um, inside of the gallbladder. So the only reason why I'm taking my time here is because I really uh, don't want to do anything that will accidentally dislodge the stent or so. So um, there definitely is some blood clot coming out. See that? That's, I think, the material that we were seeing inside of the gallbladder. Uh, but I don't have a good access here. So maybe it's better to do this with a, uh, a forward view scope and just dilate up with the forward view. So give me a, an H... Um, uh, an H190. Let's do that. Uh, rather than, as you know, these are oblique optics uh, on the echo endoscope, so this is not the ideal instrument to get good access. Uh, I certainly could have done it before, uh, and maybe should have, uh, since I was in, obviously, uh, previously, and we could have just inserted the guide wire through the uh, Axios delivery system, uh, but we'll just switch out for a gastroscope, dilate up the stent, and then we can go through the uh, the axial stent and look inside the gallbladder and clean it out a little bit because I think that would be important. It, it's really analogous to uh, doing debridement of a pseudocyst, right? We want to make sure that we clean that out. So remember, I think the reason why this patient is so sick is because he has got persistent cholecystitis and it's because that cholecystostomy is not draining his gallbladder adequately. Uh, so we need to clean that out. All right, so now I'm advancing uh, the gastroscope down. And we'll pop through, and I'm hoping just to get a, a, a better angle to access the lumen of the axio stent. So in case you're curious uh, where the name axio stent comes from, uh, I did a lot of brainstorming uh, about uh, com to come up with a name for the stent. And... Um, one night, um, I realized that it really is a, it creates a, an ostomy, if you will. It's creating an anastomosis between two lumens. Okay, here we go. And so um, it's coaxially inserted. So the first name that uh, I came up with was called the coaxial ostomy stent. Well, that got nixed pretty fast because that word ostomy was, didn't really conjure up the best, uh, the best image. So then it got abbreviated to uh, coaxios stent. So coaxial ostomy or coaxial stent, os for ostomy abbreviation. And then finally it got abbreviated to axios. They, they, the, the, the company said, ah, just drop the, uh, the co on there. So that's how, that's where the name comes from. But it turns out that um, uh, Axios is also a, a Greek god. And um, it's the god of rain, uh, of river flow. So that's exactly what we want happening through the, um, through the Axios stent. We want to see a river flow of the contents draining through the stent. All right, now let me concentrate on getting through this, uh, this pylorus here because it's an unstable position. I keep losing it. There's just a lot of edema here. You have to realize, right, he's got cholecystitis. So there's a lot of edema, and, um, uh, and I have an unstable position, so I easily fall back. And this time when I get through, here I am. I'm going to have the nurse hold the scope. So right now, I, I'm still at, a, at an angle, as you can see. So I'm going to have to find a way to sort of turn my way in like this. And, and then once I'm... Once I've turned in enough, uh, we can advance the guide wire in. Okay, go ahead and advance the guide wire. Okay, so you see the guide wire going in. And once the guide wire is in, then I can try to advance this over the guide wire, the balloon, so that we can dilate this up. And I'm coming at such a, 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 sh a strong angle. That's what makes it a little bit harder. But it's going in nicely. 
All right, so I'm pushing the balloon in now. And I'm doing this all under uh, endoscopic guidance. So let's start to dilate. You're going to see that hopefully it will straighten things out a little bit for, for us. Go ahead and start to dilate. I think so, yes. So we're going to dilate up. And bear in mind, unstable position here. But here it goes. Going up? Okay. It's gone up to eight. This is a 10 millimeter diameter stent. All right. So eight. That's good. I'll go up to nine and then go up to 10. Ten. All right. Good. Go down. All right. So now we should have it dilated up enough to be able to go through, at least with our PD scope. Okay. So I'm going to pull this out. And now we're just going to go back down with the pediatric scope and take a look inside of that gallbladder. Now remember, it's probably just going to be a lot of blood in there, old blood, maybe some fresh blood, because it, he's continued to bleed. And, and uh, the hope is uh, that we can get that, that cystostomy tube out, which is causing uh, the, the, uh, the bleeding. All right, so we're switching out for uh, the, the pediatric gastroscope. Has a diameter of about six millimeters. So um, that should be um, small enough to easily get through a 10 millimeter stent. Um, actually, if you wait a week, uh, you should be able to drive a, a, ga a diagnostic gastroscope, the 190. You can drive it through a 10 millimeter axial stent. But you don't want to do that after you've deployed the axial stent because there is a risk that um, you might dislodge the stent. All right, so uh, let's have the endoscopic view large. Yes, very nice. And I'm just going to uh, make sure the air is on for me, please. So that when I say air, it's CO2. We only use CO2 in our department. The image is not going to be great because this is a PD gastroscope. And I'm going to pass it through this edematous pylorus again. Which is easier than it sounds because the this there we go uh, because the the scope is so floppy. All right, now you see the axios, and what's really nice is that the axios stabilizes your scope as you turn the scope into the lumen of the axial stent. Now the outer lip of the axios is actually a little bit narrower, um, and the next generation will have a wider opening than the the current one. Uh, similar to the 15 millimeter. Um, oh, and so I've got the water. By the way, if you could look at this, we've got our water pump hooked up so that when I'm in the uh, gallbladder, we can start to irrigate. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, one of our assistants to hold this in a moment. As you can see, a little bit of the challenge here is my position so that I could intubate. I think. I don't know if I'm inside or outside. It's That's clearly the axial's lumen. So now Remember, we're coming at an angle, so what happens is as I push the scope forward, it tends to want to catapult out because it's, it's uh, moving forward in the axis of the bulb. And um, what I could do is put a guide wire down through the working channel to kind of provide a little bit of a guide rail for me so I don't fl slip out so easily because when I push, what, I, what happens is I get a paradox. As I push forward, I start coming back. And that's because most of the stent, um, the stent is on the side wall. And so the scope is pushing forward in the axis of the duodenal bulb. The tip that doesn't advance. So let's put the guide wire down. And then that may stabilize me just enough so I could advance the scope through. You're looking right into the gallbladder now. Uh, but we just need to have a little bit more stabilization.
And what's really critical, I think, is, um, is, is the irrigation and just uh, fleshing this out as much as possible. So you'll see the guide wire come out in just a moment. Oh, no, it pushed it out. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll have to get back through the Ademitus pylorus. Here, here, okay? So very slowly advance the wire out and then I'll try to get myself, okay, there's the wire. So one moment, I'm gonna try to turn myself again into the Axios Lumen, which is no easy task here, I can tell you. Um, trying to turn it down, because it doesn't want to go. Okay, we're getting better. Try to advance now, please. Oh, okay. Sorry, pull back a little bit, pull back. I'll tell you when to advance. As soon as uh, I have got a view inside of the lumen of the axial stent looking into the gall at the gallbladder then we can advance okay so we're not there yet because it's still it's still uh, hitting up against the wall pull back please a little bit so I can hook yeah so what I need to do is hook this this is getting better this is getting much better what I'm doing is pulling back now a little bit to change my axis try now please push there you go so now I'm going into the gallbladder. If we were using fluoro, you'd see it coil inside there. Now my hope is that this will be enough to allow me to push the scope into the gallbladder. And I'm gonna do that by kind of torquing and turning like this. So see how I'm turning? And now I'm going into the gallbladder. There's the end of the axial stent, the distal flange. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to irrigate now. Now right now we're just seeing red because of the um, because of the blood in there. But maybe with a little bit of time and flushing, we'll be able to see something. So what I'm doing is I'm irrigating with my pump. You can see uh, I've attached uh, the, the water ch uh, jet directly to the working channel. But right now, I'm still looking at clot and not able to see much. And I'd like to see something as much as you want to see something. It's just that I've got uh, just clot here. Sorry, still nothing to see, folks. Now, what we can do is, um, yeah, you're seeing some of the wires, I think, from the edge of the axial stent. Um, we could flush a little bit. Um, I'm, the problem is taking the guide wire out because I may lose what's holding me in place. So I'm trying to back off from the wall just a little bit. There's like mucus here or something that really is making it hard to see anything. So I, I would have loved to have shown you the inside of his gallbladder, but I don't know that whether that's going to happen. Uh, there's this, this is the stent wires here. Oh, this is the inside of the gallbladder. Look. This is the inside of the gallbladder. So I'm up against the wall here, but I'm backing off from the wall of his gallbladder, and you're seeing it. This is it. This is it. See all this mucus and, and stuff in there? This is the inside of his gallbladder now. It's just, uh, it's just this thick mucus 
and blood clots. See, this is the inside of his gallbladder. You're looking at it. All right, so that's it. Um, what I'm going to do is let's flush some hydrogen peroxide in here and just get this uh, cleaned out. I don't know that I can flush out. Is that like a stone there or something? I don't know. I think it's all clot. See, you see the clot? It's all up against the axiostent there. I'm kind of falling back a little bit. And one thing to consider is putting a nasal, uh, I just fell out, putting a nasal cystic tube for irrigation. But he's got a cholecystostomy tube already. So now that we've got two ports, right, we can actually irrigate from the cholecystostomy tube and then it'll drain out through the axial stent. I, I think that's a, a very nice way of being able to, uh, to flush out the contents. So I think that's what we'll do. Um, I, we've accomplished the mission, which is to get the axial stent to drain the gallbladder. Um, and um, uh, what we just hope for is that uh, that blood clot and uh, that debris uh, doesn't plug the lumen of the axial stent so that it's not able to drain. And that's why I think this idea of using the cystostomy tube for irrigation I is great. Yeah, I'm not there yet. Okay. One last look here. Let's just put the hydrogen peroxide in now, since we're here. Okay, we're just going to throw some hydrogen peroxide, and then we'll come out. That'll help break up the clot. Okay, hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Yep. Good. Nice. Nice. You can see the lumen of the stent very nicely now. You in? Good. All right. We got the hydrogen peroxide in. We're ready to come out. I'll suck out some of the fluid in the stomach. And uh, we'll actually throw some lead on now and just uh, get a, uh, an x-ray uh, showing the axial stent in place. Uh, and we'll show that to you later. Thank you. I think you just saw the first, um, this, is, this would be for the U.S., the first gallbladder drainage. I did the first pseudocyst drainage uh, in Orlando a few weeks ago, uh, just after the FDA cleared uh, the, a the hot axios uh, for, uh, for the U.S. If you want me to go down with the, the gastroscope and pull out some fluid, I'll do that. Okay, let me do that, because this is such a small channel. A little bit, 